Population growth lies at the root of sub-Saharan Africa's inability to reduce poverty and improve livelihoods. Despite the provision of significant amounts of aid and recently strong growth. Between 1992 and 2008, Sub-Saharan Africa experienced the most sustained period of economic growth in the region's independent history. But by 2017, the annual average income per person was only 200 US dollars higher than in 1974 when it had last peaked. Close to 43% of Sub-Saharan Africa's population currently lives in extreme poverty. From 2017 to 2030, its population is set to increase by almost 40% to 1.5 billion people. Despite an expected average economic growth rate of more than 4% per annum to 2030, the share of extremely poor people is expected to decrease only slowly to about 38%. Since Sub-Saharan Africa is poor, it has received more aid than any other world region. According to the OECD, Sub-Saharan Africa received $43 billion in net aid in 2015 alone, plus several billion dollars from new donors such as China and private philanthropy such as the Gates Foundation. Aid fills many gaps. It improves schooling, health, contributes to economic growth and helps reduce poverty. Most aid does this by supplementing government expenditure to expand service delivery. Improvements in education, governance and health are all important. Yet, historically, the age structure of a population has been critical. Countries with a large ratio of working age population aged 15 to 65 years to dependents, children and the elderly, tend to grow much more rapidly. This occurs when the median age of a population is between 26 to 41 years. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the median age is 19. The median ages in China and India are 37 and 27, respectively. When compared to population increases, aid levels to Sub-Saharan Africa have not increased in real terms for several years, and it is unlikely that the international community will ramp up for a big aid push. Private investment flows and remittances to Sub-Saharan Africa have increased, but most goes to middle-income countries. Poor and fragile countries will remain dependent on aid into the long term. Poor countries in Sub-Saharan Africa must improve many things, including governance and domestic revenue collection. But most important is to focus on efforts to reduce the continent's high rates of fertility. Download the full paper on the website of the Institute for Security Studies at www.issafrica.org.